Last year, Troy, you, you were one of the people who told us how great Oklahoma State was going to be last year. They got a million covers in a row, uh, but Troy came on the, on the road, came within three points of them. You're saying this is a completely different Troy team. Well, let's, let's actually use that as a great segue. Yes, it is a uh, different Troy team, but Oklahoma State was, uh, I believe, two games into a new offense that took it a while to get its sea legs. Remember, they struggled on Friday night last year when they played it. Uh, I believe Louisiana Lafayette or either Louisiana Monroe, I can't remember, but it took them all four quarters to cover that line. It was almost a miracle cover. And the common thread that I want to connect in for my next play is Dana Holgerson. Entirely new offense that Oklahoma State had to transition from going from Zach Robinson into Brandon Wheaton. And now Holgerson is the coach up at West Virginia. And you're seeing this slow yet steady uh, result of, of um high-powered offense out there in West Virginia. If you take a look at what West Virginia is doing, because West Virginia is a play that I love this week, mm -hmm. not plus one and a half. Take the money line. Take the odds because they're going to win this game straight up. Geno Smith, who was very irresponsible with the quarterback, uh, with the ball last year, six, six touchdowns and no interceptions, completing two-thirds of his passes. He's completed to 11 different wi uh, wide outs, caught balls. The one concern that people are going to say is what about the running game? They don't really have a running game. That's true, but the way that Holgerson stretches the defense, he's getting the ball to 11 different wideouts. A lot of guys with very small number of uh, catches. I, I look for West Virginia to use that uh, passing game, that short passing game, in lieu of a running game. I love West Virginia here. They score a lot of points in Maryland. You know, they had nice uniforms, but they lucked out to beat an undermanned Miami. Maryland is not a good. Right. I mean, we, we talked about in the beginning of the year that West Virginia was going to be a team that we were going to look to play on. Um, it feels a little bit fishy, though, here on this one, just getting just one point on the road. Uh, what do you make of the Maryland win over Miami? I mean, do you think that that was, uh, you know, impressive to you or, or it doesn't have much uh, bearing on this on this game to you? Well, I mean, I think there was a lot to draw of it. I think that the quarterback from uh, Maryland is really good. I think their defense is kind of suspect. They let Miami run for a lot of yards, and that's not necessarily Miami dominated in the trenches. It's because the running backs were able to break tackles. When you get into the type of offense that Dana Holgerson gets, it's about drawing matchups. And I guarantee you that they spent more of last week preparing for this game than they were for the game against mm -hmm. Norfolk State. So we haven't seen a lot from West Virginia this year. But they have the pedigree, and immediately it's showing results with Geno Smith, who's kind of rectifying the problems that he had last year, being more responsible with the ball, efficient. Uh, again, it's only a two packs, no interceptions. I really, really like this football team. I like the fact they're getting a point and a half. I don't need it, but I like West Virginia. Big step out for us. All right. John Harrison from Vegas Killers. You say you don't like games with uh, big spreads over 20. Well, here you go. One point on this game. What do you like? Do you have any opinions on it? Yeah, West Virginia's going to kill them. Uh, they don't have a run game. They're not going to need it, though. If you noticed uh, last week with Maryland, Miami was able to move the ball with their backup quarterback through the air in the second half. I think the same thing is going to happen here. Uh, West Virginia's got a scare in the first half last week against Norfolk State. Then you saw what happened in the second half. Uh, easy win over a team with probably the ugliest uniforms I've ever seen in my life. <laughs>